Well, hello. This is uh, the promised video on what's happened on our trip so far about, well, cell coverage and the lack of it. Actually, we've had a lot of luck with good cell coverage. Um, being in the New York area, there were actually lots of cell towers. Our problem has been that they aren't owned by T-Mobile. <laughs> And this is something that T-Mobile doesn't tell you when there are all their ads. That, uh, uh, yeah, they may have a lot of 5G everywhere, but uh, you can't use it because of domestic roaming. Now, uh, we have the uh, Magenta 55, and I'll uh, put that up right now as to what our account looks like. So as you can see that it uh, actually offers 40G of a hotspot, which is great. Uh, 5G, uh, 40 gigabytes, that's amazing. And it truly should be. Um, we also, at the same time when we moved into, uh, from Xfinity to T-Mobile, we got a hotspot. Um, and at the time when I, when I got the Spot. I basically was talking to the rep about how we wanted to have the same basic um, ability as the uh, jetpack. This is what we got, and this is the only thing they really offer. It, it, but the account uh, has a cap of 100 gigabytes, and uh, the, it's not 5G, it's uh, LTE because they don't have a 5G hotspot available. That's a problem, but hey, you know, after a lot of different discussions, I finally found that out. Um, when we were on the road to begin with, um, our coverage was okay, and once we got up into Montana and started roaming along uh, the, uh, well, it's basically the Canadian and the United States border, we weren't on the border, but we were running parallel to it much of the time we kept getting these uh, messages saying that we were exceeding our international roaming capability. Uh, as you might have noticed, uh, there is a unlimited amount of roaming capability internationally in Mexico or uh, Canada um, under this 55 Magenta account. But... It kept saying that we were roaming out of the country and it was we were exceeding our allotment. And so I, I went back and forth for a long time with their, and I mean like weeks, uh, with their uh, account representatives and they, it, to try to let them understand that we were a moving target just was a difficult thing all by itself. Eventually, I found out that uh, uh, we were on a 100% 100 per, 100 cap uh, at 100 G B. So once we went beyond 100 gigabytes, our hotspot, mobile hotspot, just shut off. And there's nothing you could do about it. There's no account that actually goes beyond that. You could purchase uh, one gigabyte at a time for an incredibly, you know, like 15 bucks a gig. It's like, you gotta be kidding me, right? So for us, uh, all intents and purposes, after 100 uh, gigabytes of use, and it does not differentiate between 5G or anything else, it's just a straight meter. And matter of fact, everything that I've encountered so far has been a straight meter, depending upon whom you may be talking to. Uh, there's no differentiation between 5G and LTE or just you know a signal that's coming out of a tin can <laughs> on a string. It just isn't any. So, after uh, long talks with their various people, I found out the only unlimited accounts you have are through phones or through an iPad. So I went out and got an iPad. And uh, one with cellular capability, uh, put, a, uh, <laughs> put a chip in for T-Mobile, and within minutes after we were in a, 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 a place up in, Cal well, it was uh, near the Finger Lakes, we were exceeding our data. It's like once it was, phew, big error message saying that we were 
beyond our allowable data for international roaming. Now, I'm in the middle of New York, and I keep telling these guys, never been to Canada, not going to Canada, can't go to Canada legally. So I finally got a hold of the guy who uh, I was talking to when I purchased the iPad and then put the chip in, because I didn't buy it through them. I had to buy it through a... Uh, through Apple, actually, because uh, T-Mobile didn't have any uh, uh, tablets for sale. And he he's the one who was, because I was, at that point, my wife's got a really old phone. And when I looked at what it was saying, it said I was on an AT&T tower. I went, oh, man, I know what this is. Domestic roaming. Now, my thought is, is that... Uh, T-Mobile really had to wait until they were acquired or could merge with Sprint because they needed to get the legacy agreements uh, that Sprint had with uh, third carriers like AT&T for T-Mobile to be able to say that they were a national business because you are allotted 200 MBs of, of uh, domestic roaming before they start telling you that you're no longer in luck, which means for all intents and purposes, you're playing Russian roulette with uh, your data usage, because you don't know whether you're on their tower or not on their tower. And so, long and short of it is that <laughs> this thing is a brick. For uh, It may work great someday, but uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future, until T-Mobile can actually get out there and start building towers for themselves, it's not useful. So, we went out and got one of these. It's a it is an actual jetpack. It's an LTE jetpack uh, from Verizon. Um, we've got 30 gigs of, uh, of high-speed data, and then after that, it's unlimited LTE. Now, I, one, I don't believe it differentiates between high-speed and or LTE either. I mean, it's a 4G-capable uh, hotspot, and that's really all that they've got out here for all intents and purposes. So... But that's working okay. I mean, you know, the fact is, is that when you've gone beyond your 30, it puts you a little back, bit, a little bit further back in the queue. And so, if somebody is in your cell that has high um, uh, data usage, but they are also within their 5G or 30G or 20G, whatever uh, capability, they're going to bust you out, and and you're going to wait in line behind them a little bit. Yeah, you know, whatever. For all intents and purposes, is okay. Um, we have a WeBoost uh, cellular antenna booster, and the, putting the hotspot right next to it allows me to uh, pretty much have a good Wi-Fi throughout the entire coach, and that's what we did and were doing with the T-Mobile. Obviously, it didn't work out, so now I'm doing that with the Verizon, and I have an Omni antenna. Of course, it's broken because of where we installed it, hit a tree, bam, <laughs> broken. So I'm going to take uh, some of our people's, uh, and, I, and I'd already kind of, kind of come up with this idea. I'm going to use a uh, flagpole buddy pole and put the antenna on that. And when we're camping, we're going to put it up in the air and try to get a better signal. Uh, I'm not going with an Omni direct or with a, a directional one because I'm using the Omni uh, when I'm on the road. Because once, once again, it's really quite haphazard as to whether I'm going to be on T-Mobile or not. Uh, so I'm pretty much, once we start moving, all on Verizon. Anyway, uh, this is a little bit longer than I wanted to have and maybe somewhat disjointed, but I did promise that I'd get this out to y'all. Um, I'm going to put this up on our YouTube channel too under the heading of, so you want to have <laughs> T-Mobile and go around the country? Maybe not. Uh, it, but someday, I'm sure it'll be great. I mean, they're, they're, when I have their 5G, I got to tell you, it's fast. You know, you can download, boom, it's, it's just, it's fantastic. They just don't have a lot of it out in the hinterlands. Uh, so as soon as you leave the major urban areas, you're going to be pretty much on your own and on somebody else's tower. And I believe it's probably mostly going to be AT&T. So like many other uh, uh, digital nomads, you need two things. You know, you need two different accounts. We've got an account for our phones, my wife's phone, my uh, Apple Watch. That's all on T-Mobile. And then uh, really for our data requirements, we're using Verizon. I've talked to a few people out here and they've uh, gone with the AT&T option. Works for them.
that's all good. I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, so, you know, if you really do need to have connectivity because of what you're doing in your work, or you just really need to be able to feel like you're part of the uh, internet, um, figure on having two accounts and uh, you'll go pretty well. And, and, and you know, it, you're still gonna hit a, a, a dull spot here and there, but hey, whatever. We do have um, a satellite TV, which we don't use because we're underneath trees 24 seven, apparently when we're in the east. It, satellite, once you go west of the Mississippi, really starts to be much more useful. Um, we have ours permanently installed on top of the coach. Uh, it's a dish network. And um, for all intents and purposes, when we're out west, that's fine. Uh, here, I mean, I see people trying to string hundreds of feet of wire so that they can move their antenna out to find a spot where they may be able to get the satellite. You know, um, eh, whatever. You know, I'm just not into that. Uh, I'd rather have it permanently affixed on top of the coach and not have to worry about storing it. That's just me. So anyway, that's the long and short of it. Unfortunately, it's been the long of it. Uh, right now, we're in a uh, another fantastic uh, Corps of Engineer park uh, in in Pennsylvania. Um, Seven Points Campground is the name of it, and I'm actually doing a video of continuing uh, amount of videos on uh, on uh, Corps of Engineer campgrounds because hey, why not? We're going to be in a lot of them because they're really good to be in. And they're darned ex inexpensive when you're over 55 and you've got a national pass, which we do have. Anyway, hope uh, things are going well for all of you and uh, see you on down the road.